I live in a small apartment with my 7-year-old daughter, Ava. My ex-husband and I divorced 5 years ago. The reason was domestic violence. Before we married, I had noted that he had a nasty temper at times, but my love for him was stronger. I didn't expect things to become so bad that he'd raise his hand to me. I still have scars from the injuries caused by my ex-husband, and it hurts me to remember them sometimes. But Ava was the one positive thing about being married to my ex-husband. Thankfully, my ex-husband never struck Ava, and she grew up to be a nice, smart, and gentle girl. One day, just before Ava came home from elementary school, her homeroom teacher called me. Actually, Ava got into a fight with a girl in her class today. I was very surprised by her words. Ava was a very nice girl, and even if she had had a negative experience, she would never tell anyone about it. The other child was not injured, but Ava got a big scratch on her cheek. Ava didn't tell the teacher about the cause of the fight, and she just apologized to me over the phone. I should apologize on behalf of my daughter. I hung up the phone and waited for Ava to return. What on earth could have made Ava so angry? A few minutes later, Ava returned, and just as her teacher said, she had gauze on her cheek. There you are, Ava. When I greeted her, Ava smiled as usual and said, I'm home. With that, she went to leave her school bag in her room. Ava entered the living room after washing her hands and gargling. What happened to your cheeks? I asked. Ava looked away from me and said, I tripped. As far as I knew, that was the first lie Ava had ever told me. I was trying not to hurt Ava's feelings. I just got a call from the teacher. Did you really have a fight with your friend? I asked her. Ava looked puzzled and fell silent. I wish you'd tell me what made you feel so bad. When I said this, Ava finally looked up to talk to me. Then she went back to her room and brought a picture. This is you! It was a picture of a smiling woman in a colorful field of flowers. You drew wonderful, thank you! I took the picture, but Ava continued. Because Father's Day is coming up, we had to draw a picture of our daddy today. Hearing Ava's words, I immediately felt sorry for her, because I realized how lonely Father's Day was for Ava, who didn't have a father. Then Mila commented that it was strange for me to draw a picture of my mommy on Father's Day. I told her that I drew a picture of my mom, whom I love because I don't have a daddy. She said the reason my daddy is not here is because mommy and daddy had a fight. Mila told me that she felt sorry for me because I don't have a daddy, but that it was mommy's fault that this happened. I could not deny those words. I was the one who took Ava away from her father to protect myself. That was the truth. But Ava soon dispelled those thoughts. I'm not sorry for myself. Even if daddy is gone, I still have you. Mila doesn't know you, so that's why her comments bothered me. You're the best mommy. Before Ava could finish, she was shedding tears. Ava was upset not because she had been mocked, but because her friends had spoken negative things about me. Ava, thank you. I hugged Ava as she shed tears. I thought Ava was still a young girl, 
but she grew into a powerful child who could understand other people's emotions and became upset if they were insulted. I was very happy about that. And I was so embarrassed when I discovered I was the polar opposite of her as a child. Like Ava, I also grew up in a mother daughter household. But I could not speak kind words to my mother like Ava did. My mother and father divorced when I was in the fourth grade of elementary school. My mother never told me why. And I still don't know. I have no idea what happened between them. But at least to me, my father was kind, amusing, and charming, and I adored him. So I could not immediately accept the sudden loss of my father. I couldn't be honest with my mother, and as I progressed through middle and high school, I became increasingly hostile to her. I didn't spend much time at home at night and resented my mother, who was concerned about me. When I was in high school, you must have had a bad upbringing because you didn't have a father. That explains your negative attitude. When my classmates said that to me, I took it out on my mother. It's all your fault that you made me like this. Still, my mother did not get angry with me. I'm sorry. She simply said so. My father and mother split due to marital problems, and it was never solely my mother's responsibility. Now that I've been through a divorce, I understand. But I couldn't think that way at that moment. I settled down in my senior year of high school. And started looking for a job. I didn't have the money to go to college, and I wanted to be independent as soon as possible. My mother constantly urged me to get a higher education. Finally, I found work as an office worker at a daycare center. The pay was not very large, but I was so content to be able to live on what I made. That I didn't notice anything else. But it turned out that my mother was suffering from an illness. By the time I realized it, it was too late. My mother was diagnosed with an incurable condition and informed she had little time left to live and would have to spend the remainder of her life in the hospital. I eventually grew to regret what I had done to my mother. I went to see her every day after work to make up for my faults and spend as much time as possible with her. My mother was startled at how my attitude had changed as a rebellious daughter, yet she looked pleased to see me. I tried to act as cheerful as possible so that my mother would not be anxious. But one day, I couldn't control my feelings. You did your best, but all I did was rebel. And I was a terrible daughter. I'm really sorry. I said this with tears in my eyes. But my mother looked calm. It's okay. I'll be happy with anything as long as you're alive and well. You're still my daughter, no matter what. She told me so. For the first time, I knew how much my mother had always loved me. And I knew it was too late to realize that. I had no idea how vital it was to have someone who unconditionally loves you. I was feeling very bad. Then my mother gave me something. After you, this is the second most valuable thing I have. It was a beautifully polished jewelry box. I want you to have it. Hearing my mother's words, I opened the box and found a ring inside. It was an antique ring with a smooth, 
shiny gemstone. Thank you, I will treasure it. My mother passed away three days after she gave me the ring. I never wore it because I thought it was too valuable, but I still gaze at it now and then to get power from it. My mother did her best, so I will do my best too. I will do everything to protect Ava. I can feel that way. One day, however, something unexpected happened. It was the end of the month and I was preparing to withdraw my ex-husband's child support payment as usual. The money that was supposed to be there was not in the account. When we divorced, we decided that I would not charge him alimony, but that my ex-husband would pay child support for raising Ava. I guess he didn't put it up as a direct debit, or perhaps he simply forgot to transmit the funds. Thinking so, I called my ex-husband who I rarely call. However, the number you have dialed is currently not in use. In my ears, a monotonous mechanical sound resonated. What? My mind went blank. I'd been working at the same daycare center since I graduated from high school, but my pay was still poor. Even with child support from my husband, I was still struggling to make ends meet. From that moment forward, I knew that materials and events at my daughter's school would become increasingly expensive. We lived on a very tight budget for a month, hoping that there was some kind of mistake. However, at the end of the next month, the child support was not transferred to my account. I didn't know my ex-husband's current address, nor did we have any mutual acquaintances. I had no way of contacting his parents as they seemed to have moved out of the area. And as for child support, it was an informal agreement over which I had no legal jurisdiction. He escaped. I felt ashamed of myself and was at a loss. We could never afford expensive meals but our meals had become even more economical than before. But Ava's reaction didn't change. It's delicious! She ate with a smile on her face. Her smile saved my life, but I had to do something to protect it. My impatience grew stronger and stronger. And when Ava came home with a hole in her sneakers, I felt limited in my ability to even willingly buy her shoes. Mommy, I'm sorry. I was forced into a situation where I had no choice but to choose the method that came to my mind, but that I wanted to avoid if possible. It was to sell my mother's memento ring. It was antique, and I had no idea how much it was worth, but what was on top was a genuine gemstone. I was hoping to earn enough money to buy shoes for Ava. With this hope, I went to a neighborhood pawn shop. It was a ring that my mother had treasured. I didn't really want to sell it. Mother, I'm sure you'll understand. You would tell me to protect my daughter. I told myself that and handed the ring to the mail clerk at the pawn shop. At that moment, my hand seemed to be shaking. Are you sure about this? The staff asked me. I couldn't answer right away. Yes, please. I replied. I am my mother's daughter, but I am Ava's mother too. This is the best choice. I told myself so. Okay, let me take a look. He said quietly 
and looked at the ring with a small loop. How long had it been? Ten minutes? Probably longer than that. The staff looked at the ring silently. I was astonished to observe the staff's expression as I questioned how such a process could take so long. Tears were welling up in his eyes. Huh? What's wrong? The staff seemed to come to his senses when he heard my voice. Oh, I'm sorry. He dried his tears with a Kleenex and took out what appeared to be a form to fill out. May I ask your name? He asked at me. I'm Emily Thompson. With that, he gently put down the pen he was holding without filling anything out. Then, with a deep sigh, he slowly shifted his gaze to me. May I ask you something? He asked. I was very worried that I had done something very wrong. Sure. Where did you get this? Well, it was my mother's memento. She gave it to me just before she passed away, saying that she wanted me to have it because it was very precious to her. Saying those words made my heart ache a little again, but I couldn't change my mind. I see. After a short silence, he said, Could you please give me a minute? And he went to the back of the store. Then he came back immediately and took out a ring from a small jewelry box. Actually, I have a very precious ring that I inherited from my late brother. I was very surprised when I saw the ring that he took out. It was so similar to the ring my mother had given me. My brother was a jewelry craftsman, but he got sick when he was still in his 20s. He passed away 20 years ago. However, when he realized he only had a short time left to live, he put in more effort than usual to create something. There were two rings, one for his wife, and the other to his only daughter. After he said that, Have you ever seen the inner surface of your mother's ring? He asked at me. Yes, I have. My mother's name was engraved in small letters on the inside. Hearing my words, he handed me another ring. Puzzled, I looked at the ring and so, Poor Emily. That was what was engraved on the ring. No way. I look at him with half a doubt. Yes, that's right. This is the ring my brother made for you, his daughter, at the end of his life. What? My father? But... I couldn't comprehend. How could such an amazing coincidence have occurred? My mother informed me she was divorced, but she never mentioned my father's illness. And I had never once heard that my father was a jewelry artisan. I was confused, but he kept talking. It's no surprise you didn't know about it when you were a little girl, because my brother was both an office walker and a jewelry craftsman. Our family had owned a small jewelry store and pawn store for generations. I didn't have the talent that my brother did, so I no longer did jewelry and only pawn. But after my brother found out about his illness, he didn't inform his young daughter about it. He said he was going to move out to work, when in reality, he was hospitalized. He and his wife had discussed and decided to call it a divorce because he didn't want his daughter to be sad in the event of his death. Hearing those comments, I remembered my mother abruptly telling me that they had split despite the fact that my father had never returned from his single-person assignment. I see. Tears welled up in my eyes 
as I remembered my father's warm grin from my childhood. After he finished making two rings, my brother had hesitated to give them. He was afraid they'd tie up your lives after he died. However, his wife wanted it, so he gave it to her. But my brother had decided not to give it to you. He didn't want to be a stumbling block when the new father came along. However, he asked me to give you this ring in case I saw you when you grew up. I couldn't stop the tears from falling out of my eyes. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about the love from my father and mother for me. With my father gone, I felt no more loved than I would have been in a household with both parents, or so I thought. But I was wrong. He cared for me so much. I'm sure he thought a lot about me and worried a lot for me. Because my brother was a well-known craftsman among a certain group of people, the value of this ring would be quite high. What you do with it is up to you. That is my brother's wish. When I left the store, the ring that was one when I arrived had become two. Please take your time to think about it again. I bowed deeply and left the pawn shop. What shall I do after this? How shall I protect Ava? I was thinking about it, but I couldn't bring myself to sell the two rings that had come to me. Since then, another 20 years have passed. Ava, this is the most valuable thing I have beside you. Tomorrow, I will gift Ava, who is getting married, a ring that belonged to my mother. What a beautiful ring! But it's a memento of my grandmother's, isn't it? Are you sure? Ava was surprised. Yes, it is. It's a precious good luck charm that will protect you. I owe my life a lot to that ring. I'm sure it will protect you too. When I said that... I see. Thanks. So, when I have a daughter, I will pass it down to her as well. Ava answered me with her usual smile. Since that day at the pawn shop, I have been thinking of ways to protect Ava without selling the rings. I couldn't change occupations because I only had a high school diploma. I broke out of my shell and worked hard to find a new job. As a result of my determination, I was transferred to a corporation with a career track position. I managed to send Ava to college. The two rings are now in Ava's hand and mine. The love between parent and child contained in these two rings will be passed down to the next generation. That's what I believe.